the Kinoto Bong rejoins. Um, I've just shared the um and the screen again. So when he comes on, he would be resharing it again. So apologies once again for that. Um, so I'll just stand in for him on, until he joins back. So I know he was trying to do a very quick introduction um of the topic. I want to believe um everybody can hear me. Amen. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So I think he was trying to do a quick um, introduction of the topic. And um, here we go. We can see what the content is. But please, um, just, just to mention some quick housekeeping, as um, we normally do, I wish he had, I think he was going to get to that point. Let's make the Bible study very interactive, as we normally do, okay? Um, uh, we, we want you to talk. So usually what happens is between now and 8.20, um, the teacher, which is the Knoto Bong this time around, will take us through the teaching. We have about um, seven slides um, to go through. And once he's done with that, then we'll go into the, uh, the Q&A, all right, the, the question and answer uh, and, and time. So at that point in time, we really want you to engage, want to, uh, to ask questions, because supernatural is a very interesting topic. So we want you to ask questions. And you know the way we normally do it. If you've got a question, you can raise your hand electronically all right by just clicking on the on, on the relevant button and we will come to you in the order that you raise your hand all right if not you can just type type your question type your comment in the uh, the comment uh, uh section of of the zoom and uh, we will be going live on facebook uh, very soon so those who are on facebook can also um, um comment um as well okay so here we go the content um of our slides we can see we are looking at the origin of the supernatural life the why of the supernatural, living supernaturally, naturally. Then we go into the questions, the conclusions, and then, of course, there would be a memory verse for us to take. All right? So never mind. As soon as the Kinoto Bong is back, he will take over from myself. Okay? Another thing I want to also beg from you people, please, we have quite a number of Bible, um, a number of um, uh, scriptural references as we normally do, okay? We don't just do Bible study. We, we we really go straight. We go into the scriptures because we want people to open their Bibles, whether it's an electronic Bible on your on your, your tablet or it's a physical Bible. We want interaction. We want participation. So as you can see on the screen, we have a number of Bible um, verses, uh, Bible references. So please, when I call them out or the Kingdom and call them out, just feel free to read them for us okay so um the first uh first uh um, slide here we're looking at the origin of the supernatural and our first bullet point here says that god created everything can somebody help us read john chapter 1 verse 3 john chapter 1 verse 3 can somebody help us read that thank you Anybody found John chapter 1, verse 3? Thank you. John chapter 1, verse 3. He says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so yeah. much for that, uh, Sister Chidi Eberi. So if you look at that particular scripture, that's verse 3, but it's a, it's a scripture I can memorize, I know by heart. So if we look at mm. it in verse 1, all right, the Bible says in the beginning, all right, yes. what the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. Then he then goes and says that all, you know, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, all right? So he's referring to the word. So this slide talks about the origin of the supernatural. So what is the origin of the supernatural? The origin of the supernatural is God, the word, because it says that all the physical things that we can see on earth today they couldn't have come into existence without the agency of the word of God. Okay. Mm. I would say in John chapter one as well, that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and reality. So Jesus in the beginning of the world, Jesus was the word of God. He was the word in the father. Jesus did not have flesh. He did not have body. He did not have physical eyes like he did when he came into the world. That's what the Bible says. The word was made what? Flesh. flesh. So in the beginning, Jesus was only known as what? The word. The word in the father. The word in the father. So when we're talking about the origin of the supernatural, we must trace it back to the spoken word. 
that is what started off the supernatural. Because we know that this world is supernatural. Look at the world around you, right? Think about it. How does the, the green leaf, how, how does the leaf, all right, of, of, of a tree or even the flowers, how, what makes them green? What makes them green? How did this entire world come into existence? Some people said, oh, yes, oh, the Big Bang Theory, but that has been debunked, you know, that there was nothing ever like that, all right? We stand on the what the Bible says, all right? That in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, God created what? The heavens, that is space and the earth, all right? God created it. So we know that at the heart of, uh, of the source of the supernatural is God himself, okay? Our second bullet point there says that the entire creation story shows a God who is in total control, all right? Mm -hmm. so, so if we can't talk about creation story without going back to Genesis chapter one, and we can see here in Genesis chapter one, verse 26, if somebody has got it, um, please, can you read for us? Thank you, Chidibiri, for reading previously. Who wants to read Genesis chapter one, verse 26? Yeah, Genesis, Genesis 1, 26. Genesis 1, 26. Oh. Okay, Abigail. Okay. Abigail can okay. read it. And then the okay. next one, okay. uh, Pastor Austin can read. Abigail, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Genesis 1, 26. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Hmm. Make them reflecting our nature. Yeah. All right. So let us hmm. make them in our own image. All right, the transition you read, you know, says let, let, let them reflect our nature. You know, the King James say, you know, and God said, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness mm -hmm. and let them have dominion. You all right? How many of you believe that God is supernatural? If you believe it, give me a thumbs up. Just click on the thumbs up. I want to know how many people on this line believe that mm -hmm. God is supernatural. Mm -hmm. Give me a thumbs up quickly, quickly, quickly. If you believe that God is supernatural. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody who does not give me a thumbs up, I will believe you don't believe that mm -hmm. God is supernatural. <laughs> so I am looking out for those that don't believe that God Almighty is supernatural. So that I will report it to the Holy Spirit tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. So thank you for the thumbs up. Let's keep them coming. Keep them coming. I just want to make sure that you are, we are all here. Okay. Praise God. All right. Mm -hmm. Just focus your mind on the study. Your life will not be the same again. Amen. All right. Amen. So it says the entire creation story shows a God who is in what? In total control. We all remember how God made, you know, how God recreated the world according to Genesis chapter one. All right. Mm. In the beginning was the world. So what we see, that creation we see in Genesis chapter one was not actually when God created the world, guys. It mm. was when God recreated it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because God created the world in the beginning and the world was beautiful. The world was amazing because God, I mean, can you think about God making something that is shapeless, making something that is dark, you right? Make, 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 make it something that is formless. No, mm. no. God, 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 right? God, God cannot make so any, God, God cannot make anything like that. Whatever God makes is amazing. Whatever God makes is beautiful. Whatever God makes is amazing. The Bible says God makes all things beautiful. Mm. So our God is a beautiful mm. God. He doesn't make ugly. He makes mm. beautiful. All right? So, but the world that God created got, got messed up, right? Remember, you know, the Bible says that and there was war in heaven, okay? And uh, um, Lucifer uh, 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 and the angels that ganged up with him against God Almighty. Now, God was just too big for that fight. God did not get involved in that fight at all. God didn't get involved. And Jermichael took it upon himself. Like, God, relax, we, we, we've got this. And they dealt with the devil, dealt with it with you know with the angels that sided with him and the bible said there was no room for them in heaven anymore so what happened they were expelled from heaven when they were expelled what happened they came down to the earth guys that was when the earth was messed up so what you see in genesis chapter one is god recreating what was messed up when the devil was cast out of the heavens all right okay now I hope we are following up onto this point because I want to make sure I give you a good foundation for you to grasp the supernatural. The supernatural is not difficult to grasp. Amen? Praise God. All mm -hmm. right. So God saw that the world that he created had been messed up. All of a sudden, it had become dark. There was darkness upon the face of the deep. 
All right. It had become, it was void. That means it was empty. My goodness. God cannot, God doesn't create empty things. Okay. And what did God do? God did not hold a pity party to say, oh my goodness, the, the world I created, oh, this devil has messed it up. Oh, what am I going to do now? No, 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 no. The Bible said that the spirit of God was hovering over the, over the face of the deep. And what did God do? God began to speak what he wanted into existence. He began to speak what he wanted into existence. That's why, the, that's why I'm, I'm relating Genesis chapter 1 to John chapter 1. All right, that's Sister Chidi Beri read for us earlier. That uh, um, without him was nothing made that was made. So everything was made by the word. You can trace the origin of the supernatural to what? To the word of God. Okay, so God began to speak what he wanted to see into existence. Okay, and the first thing that God commanded to be was what? Everybody type it for me. What was the first thing God spoke into existence? Help me type it now if you're on Zoom. What was the first thing God spoke into existence? Quick, quick, quick. I want to see it on the charts. You know me, when Pastor Obi takes Bible study, it has to be lively, it has to be engaging, because I need to know that you are there. Quite a number of you have got your Zoom videos off. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that, but I need to know you are there. Okay? Praise the Lord. So go ahead and type it. What was the first thing that God spoke into existence? According to Genesis chapter 1. Quick, 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 quick. I'm giving you all um, 30 seconds to type that out. Praise God. Okay, let me have a look at the chat and see what people are typing. Okay, 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 okay. So we're saying that the first thing that God spoke into existence was what? Light. Light. Hallelujah. Well done, well done. You guys can all clap for yourselves. Good, good, good. It means that, it means that we are here. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Pastor is not alone. Okay, so the first thing that God spoke into existence was light. And why? Can somebody tell me why we think God spoke light first into existence why was it necessary for him to speak light why just out of curiosity this is not today's bible study one of one of the questions this is just my question i'm just curious somebody can type it from you. you don't have to talk just go ahead and type it why do you think why 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 do you think that god spoke light into existence first because darkness was not the only problem that the world was facing at the time the bible says it was empty it was void the bible says it was it was shapeless, okay? So it was not the first thing that God that God did, all right? Uh, 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 I mean, it wasn't the only problem. Okay, I have a hand raised up, SFO. SFO, I'm trying to decode the meaning of SFO. All right, can you unmute yourself and tell us, um, why do you think that God spoke like Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Tell us your name. Me, okay. Go ahead and answer. Okay, SFO means... My my full name is Oluwa Shim, so S is Shim Olure. Oh, F is welcome, fate. welcome. Shim Faith Olure. I can place the name now on the face. Go, go on, go on. Tell us. All right, sir. Um, well, basically, there is nothing you want to do in the darkness when everywhere is dark. When it's dark, just like we human beings, maybe you are you are you are you are doing something in the kitchen. You are working, and um, before you know it, the, the, the light electricity is interrupted. You mm -hmm. became you become stuck. You yep. can't do anything until mm -hmm. the light is on. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's not that God cannot see in the dark, but he is light himself. Hallelujah. So he operates more. He operates more in the light. Mm. He operates more in the light. That is why when somebody, when when People, when you are, that's why God cannot deal with people that are of darkness mm. because his spirit does not, does not go in line with darkness. Mm. So he has to make sure that there is light where he wants to operate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has to make sure there is light where he wants to operate. That's my own understanding. Fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. You know, if you want to get anything done, the first thing, I mean, you need light. Just imagine you are in a place and you are working and all of a sudden, boom, there's power outage. Everything stops because you can't see. If it's dark, you can't see. You can't do anything. 
All right. It's not like God needed light, just like um um, um as the said, it's not like she needed, I mean, God needed light, not necessarily. It's the world that needed the light. God yeah. is light itself. So he had to speak yeah. the light into existence for yeah. the benefit of That's the true. world. Praise God. Praise God. Abigail, I really like your your, your comment here. You say you said the world was void, uh, empty, and that the message translation said the earth was a soup of nothingness. Oh my goodness, that's lovely. I've never seen that before. <laughs> so that's what the, the message translation, that's how the message translation put it out. The world was in a serious mess. It was a soup of nothingness. I know that more people want to contribute. Let me just hear um, Pastor Austin from our senior party in Manchester. Just tell us what you think, sir, before we move okay. to the next slide. And then at that point, I will hand over to Dickin Otobon, who, praise the Lord, is back now. Okay, yeah. go ahead, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, another another word for darkness is emptiness. Mm. So in other words, God when God appears, is he comes to feed the emptiness. Yep. So when 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 we see when when the word we use the word there darkness, it means there was nothing there. It mm -hmm. was completely empty. Mm -hmm. So when God showed up, God became the fullness. God became the presence Amen. in that darkness. Amen. So that's what it says. So when He said and He spoke out light, it means He 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 released Himself. Mm -hmm. So he could occupy that emptiness. Mm -hmm. So there will be something real in that place. So, mm -hmm. so that's what. And so darkness literally doesn't mean somewhere that is dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the most times say, ah, it's dark. That means that no. It means the word there means emptiness, nothing there, mm -hmm. nothing there. So mm -hmm. when God shows up, His presence occupies those. those you know, it it gives relevance to that emptiness. It uh, it gives a uh, uh, importance to that place you think is empty where He shows up. So that's a uh, amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Thank you so much for that, um, Reverend Austin. So we know that, um, you know, God, I mean, God is light. And remember, Jesus said that you are the light of the world. So you, as a believer, you don't need light. It is the world that needs light. So that's why you must be like God and speak for, I speak for light. Jesus told the disciples when they went to preach, he said, into any house you go, say, peace be unto this house. Until you speak it, it will not be. When you speak it, then it becomes. So we need to be like our Papa God. All right? Okay. So let me just run through the rest of the uh, 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 the bullet points here. It says, man exhibited the characteristics of the Godhead until sin severed that relationship. All right? So man was in control until sin. So we find that in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis. All right? And then our last bullet point here says, this faith in Jesus permits the Holy Spirit to indwell every, every believer. So I think we are jumping a little bit there. So I would like to leave it at the bullet point before the last one. All right? So I will focus our attention on Genesis chapter 1. I would lift, I'll, I'll actually advise everyone after this Bible study, maybe tomorrow, try and go back again and read Genesis chapter 1. Just read it again. Just to remind yourself, refresh your memory on Genesis chapter 1. Okay. At this point in time, I am more than happy to hand back uh, the presentation of the Bible study to our very own Deacon Otobong. Deacon Otobong, I hope you're there now. Praise yes, thank God. you, Pastor. Thank you. All right. So thank I have you. made you a co-host again. Okay. Oh, okay. You're welcome back. You're welcome. All right. back. Thank you. Um, okay. So I hand over to you on the next slide. The why okay. of the supernatural. Okay. All right. Okay. Pastor, are you still going to handle the sharing because I wanted to share myself and no go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. It will override my one. That's fine. Okay. So guys, okay, just give us 10 seconds and we will switch over. Thank you. Can people see my screen, please? Yes, sir. If you, you can, can see it, yeah. presentation mode. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Uh, Pastor, thank you for the the wonderful intro. <laughs> unplanned but we thank God for it we're ever ready <laughs> right so now um, after uh, receiving help from pastor we are going to look at why the supernatural life is important why are we learning this why should we bother why should we be talking about this why is this supernatural life attractive mm. so I've got a few reasons here there are lots and lots of them but I've got a few reasons. The first reason I have here is that the supernatural life manifests God's grace and glory. And to support that, I would like somebody to read John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11 for me. John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11. Okay. John chapter 2 verse 1 to 11. Yeah. Uh, it says, it says, and 
the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the woman of Jesus, and the woman, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and the disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. And Jesus said not to Je Jesus said to her, Mother, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Then his mother said to his servant, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Mm -hmm. six, and there were set six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three flinkings apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pot with water, come on. and they filled it up to the they filled them unto the brim. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Say, draw out now. Mm. And bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that it was made, it that was made wine, and knew not where as it was, but the servant which drew the water knew. Then the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at this at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men had well drunk, that then that which is worse, but thou had kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracle did Jesus do in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and the disciples believed on him. Right, Hallelujah. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Austin. See, look at what the supernatural life does. He serves today. Imagine in a wedding, the wine is finished. That kind of embarrassment. But the supernatural showed up and things were sorted out. You know, the, 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 the strategist here was the mother of Jesus. He just told the servants, whatever he tells you, do that. Yeah. And they listened to Jesus and the whole thing was turned around. So one of the reasons we, we really, really go for this supernatural life is because it manifests God's grace. And glory, we go for the next reason. The supernatural life demonstrates the power of God. Now, to confirm that, we're going to read from Acts chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6. Acts chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6, demonstrates the power of God. Hallelujah. Who's reading for me? Acts chapter 3, 1 to 6. Okay. Acts 3, Acts 1, 3 to 1 to 6. Okay. No, go ahead, ma. Go ahead, ma. Okay. Act 3, 1 to 6 from message translation. One day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Peter and John were on their way into the temple for prayer meeting. At the same time, there was a man crippled from bed being carried up. Every day he was set down at the temple gate. The one named beautiful to beg from those going into the temple when he saw peter and john about to enter the temple he asked for a handout peter with john at his side looked him straight in the eye and said look here he looked up expecting to get something from them thank you very much we know the rest of the story I just want us to study where I've extended to 10, but that is fine. When the disciples say, silver and gold have I known, but what I have, I'm going to give <clears throat> unto you in the name of Jesus. Stand up and walk. And that was that was it. The man stood up and started jumping and jumping and jumping. The supernatural demonstrates the power of God. This is the one of the reasons we need to go after the supernatural because it demonstrates the power of God as we've seen from them. Now, the third point is that the supernatural life confirms God's word and his promises. It confirms God's word and his promises. Now, the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Somebody read that. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Acts 2, 17. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Mm -hmm. Your old men shall dream dreams. Dream dreams. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now confirms what God was promised, and that is happening even till today. Okay, we are still speaking in tongues, we are still prophesying. You know, the word of God is still sure, it's yes and amen. So the supernatural life, life in the spirit confirms God's word and his promises. Now, the next reason why we should desire this supernatural life on a daily basis, not just intermittently, on a daily basis, everything we do. The supernatural life gives strength and courage. Now, to confirm this, we are going to read Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Somebody read Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 for me. Bible readers, let me, let me be very quick, please. Eh? Thank you. Joshua 9, 1, verse 17. One nine. No, no, Joshua oh. chapter 1, verse 9. Joshua oh. 1, 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Yes. Be not be afraid, mm -hmm. neither be thou dismayed. Mm -hmm. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Mm. All right. That was the situation that Joshua was in immediately after his mentor had gone of the scene. Joshua was still trying to manage himself. God had to show up. And told the Moses, my servant is dead. Arise. Now, it's, God is encouraging him to be strong and courageous. So, it's, God is now inviting him to this supernatural life that his mentor had finished living and gone. This particular supernatural life. So, God is telling him to be courageous, to be strong. So, the supernatural life, you know, gives strength and encouragement and courage. Now, so we have point number five here. With the supernatural, the guidance, with the supernatural guidance and direction is guaranteed. You know, there are times that you get to crossroad, you don't know what to do. That is when the supernatural shows up and begins to tell you, do it this way, do it this way, enter the other way and do it this way. So we are going to look at, confirm, look at the confirmation of that from Proverbs chapter three from verse five to six. Proverbs chapter three from verse five to six. Somebody read for me, please. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Mm. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. I like I like that translation. I like it too. <laughs> I like the translation. It breaks it. It breaks it. Properly. Happy girl, what translation are you using? The message translation. All right, thank you. No one. I don't have anything to add. To that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to add. He sorted. He sorted that one out. So we are given direction. We are given guidance. Now we go to the next slide. Now, this slide, we are going to look at living supernaturally, naturally. That means everything, our daily activities, there is a supernatural content to it. It is, we are living, doing natural things in a supernatural way. Now, the first thing we are going to look at is, you know, we've already found out that the supernatural refers to a realm that is superior to the natural. The supernatural controls the physical. Now, now, a lot of people define the supernatural, you know, in so many different ways. One of the definition of supernatural is that is the manifestation of the word we receive, the word we believe, the word we obey, which God then confirms as signs and wonders. I'm going to read that again. The supernatural life is the manifestation of the word we receive. We have to receive the word first, the word we believe, the word we obey, which God then confirms as signs and wonders. So all that, that is what gives the sequence of um, events that happens and ends up as a sign and wonder, which we call the supernatural life. We receive the word, we believe the word, we obey the word, that means we engage with the word, and then God is there to confirm the, that word that we receive as a sign and a wonder. If we can read from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 20, please. Mark 16, 20. 
Mark what, please? Mark 16. <laughs> Chapter 16, verse 20. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me clear it down. And the disciples went every way and preached, and the Lord walked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. And the disciples went every way and preached. So when we are living this supernatural life, God will be waiting to confirm, you know, whatever we say, and it becomes our life. That's what we say. Our life becomes a sign and a wonder to everybody. People will be asking us, how do you manage? You know, so the, 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 the answer to that is we are living the life of Christ. We are living the supernatural life. Now, basic things like kindness, love, giving, everything that we do is done supernaturally. Imagine, you know, you are loving in a supernatural way. You are being kind to somebody in a supernatural, you are giving in a supernatural way. You know, it becomes very, very beautiful. You know, so that is the kind of life. When we are saying we are living life supernaturally in a natural way, that is that is that every part of our daily life activity is done with a supernatural content in it. We are doing it, our daily life activities supernaturally. John chapter 15, verse 13, please. John chapter 15, verse 13. Anybody that says, read that for me. John, John chapter 15, verse 15. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. Mm. Thank you. You know, that is the supernatural content of the love that we are talking about. Jesus showed us an example that when you claim to love, you need to be ready, okay, to lay down your life for your friends. That is the peak of love. So that is the supernatural content. If you are saying, if you want to measure your love, are you ready to go that far? That is what our Lord Jesus did for us. So living supernaturally, naturally. Now for us to, to, to live this kind of life, we need absolute faith in God and his word. And that is the foundation of the life in the supernatural. We need absolute faith in God and his word. Now, we are going to read the confirmation of that from the book of Mark chapter 11, 22 to 23. Mark 11, 22 to 23. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Hallelujah. Thank you, Beams. Right. Have faith in God. We need to have faith. We need to believe in God, have faith in God and his word. That sets the foundation of this life that we want to live, this supernatural life. Now, another very important thing is we need to have the knowledge of who we are who we are in God, who we are, are in Christ. You know, when you know who you are, your life takes a different, a totally different meaning. You do things differently. You know, let's look at the book of Exodus chapter 7 from verse 1. Exodus 7 okay. from verse 1 and 2, yes. Exodus 7, 1 and 2. God told Moses, look at me. I will make you as a god to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to speak everything I command you, and your brother Aaron will tell it to Pharaoh. Then he will release the Israelites from his land. At the same time, I am going to put Pharaoh's back up and follow it up by filling Egypt with signs and wonders. Thank you very much. See, God came and identified, he came and told Moses who he was, you know, so that Moses will understand, you know, he said, I'm going to make you a God to this man, Pharaoh. So immediately, Moses heard that his legs had springs. He was so bold because God had told him, God has given him the confirmation he needed that he's going to act like a God 
is going to perform like God in front of Pharaoh. So Moses had the confidence to go there and challenge Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh things because God has already told him in, in, the, sec in the secret place that he is going to perform as a God in front of Pharaoh. So knowing Moses was able to know who he was, you know, in this journey, you know, if we as believers, we are able to understand, have an understanding of who we are in Christ. And then, because when you know who you are, you act differently. Okay. You know, a lot of things, you know, doesn't, you, you are not anxious over things. You are very confident, you know, because you know what the end result is going to be. Irrespective of what you are seeing on a daily basis, you know that the end result is going to be favorable for you because you know who you are. We are going to quickly go to the next slide. And the next slide is a slide that the entire class should unmute. Now the chat function is there. If you don't want to talk, um, if you want to, you want to just type, you can type. So these are the questions. Um, we are going to look at these questions. I want to really people share their experiences and um, you know, just put your hand up. I'm going to call on you and then you know you answer the question. We've got about four questions here. Now the first question says, why is the supernatural life important? Why is the supernatural life important? I think in the course of us going through the slide, I think we touched on that. But it doesn't have to be one of the things that we touched on. It could be any other reason why you feel the supernatural life is important. Why is it important? Who wants to go first? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to quickly read them um, 1 Corinthians 1 4. Okay, but the natural yeah. man receiveth not the things of the spirit. Mm. But that's for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually. So for, for us, um the, the supernatural the supernatural life is important because for you to partake of this life, you have to discern spiritually these things. They are not things that the physical mind mm -hmm. or the physical eye can discern. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Any other reason, please? We discuss a couple of reasons why, you know, we, we have to study the supernatural. Why do we desire this supernatural life? Why is this supernatural life important? There, there are a lot of reasons I want us to share. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think one of the things that um, you mentioned was the fact that when we were defining the supernatural is that the spiritual, the spiritual realm controls the physical. So, um, and that is so true because everything that happens um, physically, you know, in the spirit realm, you know, something must have, you know, been triggered in the spirit realm. And like we all know, um, as a man, we are tripartite. As a man, we are um, a soul living in a body and we have our human spirit as well. So for us to, as Christians, like, you know, live the kind of the God life that God wants us to live on, on the face of the earth, things that you have mentioned, for example, like, um, you know, walking in love, and things like that. We we need the enablement of the spirit. We need the spirit's help, you know, for those things to for us to be able to live that kind of life, for us to be able to live the God kind of life. We need the supernatural. So the supernatural life is very, very important so that we can enforce God's will on earth. That's why you know, when Jesus was um teaching us how to pray, he said. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there is God's will, you know, that he wants to accomplish on earth. And it is we believers that can bring those will to a pass on earth by tapping into the spiritual realm. I'll give an example, you know, like sometimes um, there was the story of someone that was trying to cast spells in Africa back then against someone. 
I think they were both uh, business partners or something like that. And the person will go naked every day, midnight, you know, do all their incantations and everything just with the hope of arming someone else. And I think eventually the thing, like the other person maybe fell ill and things like that. So even in the um, dark world, as in, in the evil world, in, in Satan's kingdom, such kind of things happen. People do voodoo, people do magic. You understand? They, they, they also do some things they do. They do sacrifices. They do all those things in the evil way. So all those things, you know, even though it is evil, but because they, they, they commit themselves to it, they go through the rituals, they do the sacrifices. Some mm -hmm. of those things now become manifest physically. Mm -hmm. So as Christians too, we have access to God and we have access to the spirit of light in God. So we can superimpose God's will by operating the supernatural in our physical world. If we want any changes, you know, one of the definitions of prayer that I like very much is by Miles Monroe, the late Miles Monroe, he said that prayer is... Um, like uh, prayer is like I I invoking heaven on earth. I didn't say it quite correctly, but, but what he meant was that, you know, prayer is like, you know, manifesting God's desire on earth. You know, when we pray, when we speak, you know, God's desires becomes, to, it, be it begins to come to pass. So as Christians, we need to tap into the supernatural. We need, we need to, to live, you know, in the spirit. We need to walk in the spirit so that we can see the uh, reign of God. Let's look at it, for example, just like, you know, uh, walking in love. It's not like natural. Sometimes we want, to, there is that humanity in us. We want to do me, I do you, God, no go vex. You know, the law of Moses say an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. So as a Christian, when we become Christians, when we are born again, and, you know, we now have to live out that life. Sometimes it, we, we might find it difficult that, ah, you know, it's because it's against, like the natural course of things, but when we operate in that realm of the supernatural and we we choose to walk in the spirit, we'll be able to. It will become effortless, you know, for us. We'll be able to love without measure because the love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. We'll be able to to do things effortlessly by just operating in the supernatural. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, um, Deacon Philip. I've got a few um. Right before I go to Nkem, um, uh, I've got a few uh, from the chat functions, few answers. Um, from Abigail, it says the supernatural life brings the confirmation of God's promises. That's right. It brings confirmation to God's promises. I've got from um, Chidebere, it proves God's word. Our believing brings the performance. Yes, that's right. And then from Brother Michael, God created us in his image and likeness we shows we are to live like him. Without the supernatural life, we won't be able to live like God. Very correct. And then Chidebere came back to say that the supernatural is a life of faith. Faith without which no man can please God. Thank you. Keep it coming in. Thank you very much. Now, over to you, Nkem. Nkem, you can take the floor. Okay. Um. Right. I'm going to um. Praise the Lord. The okay. That's not in camp. This is Oh well. Okay. All right. I'm just. I'm just going to say in, in a very simple way, as it comes to my spirit, that the supernatural helps us to unravel some mysteries of life. Uh, the importance of supernatural is so that we could solve problems, just like God came and solved the problem of darkness. Mm -hmm. You just use supernatural to, in fact, that's the part of supernatural that I like, unraveling things that are hidden, Hallelujah. you know, unraveling the mysteries of life, Hallelujah. solving problems, solving problems of life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Unraveling mysteries. Life could be very mysterious at times, right. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, we go to question number two. Are there any challenges in living a supernatural life? Are there any challenges? When we know all the importance and all the benefits mm -hmm. of dwelling in the supernatural, living the supernatural life. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that can challenge us from staying there? 
let me jump on this one quickly. So are there any challenges in living the supernatural life? I think the principal challenge to living the supernatural life is unbelief, okay? Mm -hmm. Or a lack of demonstration of faith. Um, I mean, I'm sure we all, you all agree with me that um, when somebody was sick, you know, maybe with a debilitating disease like leprosy, or they are uh, they, they they were blind. You know, uh, you know they had a disease of blindness, and then they miraculous. I mean, and then and then they got healed. That is the supernatural at work, isn't it? Now Jesus in his time, on to a number of people who got healed through his ministry, Jesus would say, "Daughter, your faith has made you whole." Or to the man, "Your faith has made you whole." All right, the woman would do more with issue of blood. Jesus said the same thing um, to her. All right, so without a demonstration of faith, Jesus didn't say, My faith made you whole. He didn't say, My anointing made you. He said, Your faith has made you whole. So for the supernatural to occur, there has to be a demonstration of faith. Remember the centurion's daughter. Who was lying at uh, 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 at home? Uh, no, no, so central servants who was lying at home sick, and he went to Jesus and and, and spoke to Jesus, and Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, I will come home. I'll come. Say, no, 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 no. I'm not worthy. I should come under my house. Just speak the word only, and my servant will be well. And Jesus said, Well, as you have spoken, so it will be unto you. And the guy got home and discovered that you know it was exactly the time that Jesus spoke those words that the healing occurred. Okay, so. A big challenge is unbelief. So I'm not going to say how do we, you know, um, counter that because that's not the question. It just says, are there any challenges in living a supernatural life? Unbelief is one big challenge. There are others. Thank you very much, Pastor, for that unbelief. That unbelief can have so many other branches can be manifested in different ways. Right, iPhone, go ahead. Uh, praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Sorry. Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca, happy birthday! <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, doubt. Mm. Yeah, that is the cause of unbelief. unbelief. Uh, doubt. Uh, uh, if it's the sister or the twin sister or the nephew or the relative, <laughs> but doubt. Even by the same, <laughs> a double-minded person that did not even think of asking anything from God because you will not get it. Mm. doubt with doubt comes unbelief unbelief you lose faith you lose focus mm. so doubt once that's why the word of god says renew your renew your mind daily mm -hmm. because there is bound to be challenges there are mm. bound to things that make you waver mm. but when you stay focused stay fixed i i i if we were to write the bible in this modern time we can give an example that the centurion definitely things must have crossed his mind. What if before I get to Jesus, this this person dies? Mm -hmm. What if mm -hmm. on the way, even after you have finished praying, what if the prayer does not work? But in my mind, I try to figure out how much faith or how much focus kept him in the same mood till he went to Jesus until he got back. Because it was a journey. Imagine back in the days, not now that you can easily get to where you, wherever you want to get to. But it has to tell you how much focus on that belief, on that faith that he had. So I think that if we see from that light, it will encourage us not to have doubt. Mostly when we have something we are pushing for, or we're praying for, for the supernatural. Trust God hold on to it don't even think sideways don't bend don't lose focus that way your faith is like the same kind of faith that was counted to abraham for righteousness he did not even think of despite his age despite you already seen the challenges that's why the 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 deadness of his wife's womb he did not even see he said he trusted god to trust foolishly like that mm. it's counted for him as righteousness i think if we can be foolish before god then we, we, that faith, that kind of faith, you know, that that's what I'm impressed about. <laughs> no Hallelujah. doubt, don't doubt. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you so much, Sister Rebecca, for for that. Um, I think I've got here from is it constant fear and lack of total trust in God. Mm. I still hovering around the doubt, the unbelief. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got from. From breath, yeah. Another challenge is lack 
of exposure to sound doctrine. Mm. Okay, lack of exposure to sound doctrine. If you are not taught properly, if you don't know the truth, you can be you can be vulnerable. Um, you know, you might not be able to live the supernatural life. Now, question number three. Does Please, the Lord, hello? Can I can I also just add the pressure of life? Pre pressure, pressure, <laughs> prayer. <laughs> I I just want to say the way like. The, the distractions of life, pressure of life, because to be able to manifest the supernatural, I want to bring it to that point where I could explain what I mean. Mm -hmm. To be able to manifest the supernatural, you need to stay connected with mm -hmm. God. Like you need to be in tune. Like all of us, all of us knows how God works with us. When we talk about hearing from God, because you can't even manifest the supernatural if you are not connected if your spirit is not connected to God. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, the example pastor give about healing of the sick. If you see people who manifest the healing ministry, you see they are always constantly trying to be in worship, mm -hmm. you know, bringing the presence of God. All of us knows the way God relates to us. Yeah. Somebody like me recently I'm, I'm praying to stay in prayer as much as I would always stay in prayer because mm -hmm. I know that if I stay in prayer, I, I have a lot of open revelations of the things I do every day and about the people that are around me or the people that I'm praying for. So, but the pressure of life right now, the distractions of life, the things we pursue every day, the life we live now, the, our career life and uh, every other thing begin to push us so we see ourselves living more in uh, flesh more than in the spirit and then supernatural seems to be lessening mm -hmm. the life of supernatural mm -hmm. seems to be lessening mm -hmm. we, we are we are actually asking why a lot of things are no longer happening in the mm -hmm. church and in the gathering of the brethren the pressure of life the pressure the, the quest to get more things every day, we we unconsciously, it doesn't happen consciously. I, I'm believing that from my own testimony. Unconsciously, you're pursuing things. If it is people that need to stay in prayer for a longer time, even when I personally, I believe that I can do more by praying, like I'm moving and I'm praying. But somehow, it, it is not the same as when you consciously take out time to pray. Praise the Lord. So pressure is part of it. Amen. I, so I think, let me just add one more. Thank you, Pastor Chibuza, for that. Because what you said just made me remember one. So I think another thing that, another challenge to living the supernatural life is, you know, what has got your attention? What is your focus? Exactly. Uh, if we look at um, the reactions of, or the, yeah, the reactions of Mary and Martha, um, you know, over the, the raising of their brother Lazarus, and then if we if we track back to the encounter Jesus had with them when he visited their house and Martha was all over the place preparing for Jesus, you know, for food to entertain him. But Mary was at, sat at Jesus's foot and was listening to the word. And Jesus told her, hey, Martha, relax. You are just busy about all of these things. But listen, Mary has chosen the, to do the right thing and it will not be taken away from her. All right. The food you are preparing can be taken away from you. But the word that Mary is receiving, that, that once it gets uh, uh, solidified and has its roots in her heart, it cannot be taken away from her. And we can see that manifest itself in the reaction between um, the two of them. If you read through and see how Martha reacted and how Mary reacted, you can tell the difference between, the difference between you know, both of them who had more faith than the other. Okay, or who didn't even have any faith at all that Lazarus will rise again. So what has got your attention? The Bible says, I think I mentioned it at the beginning of the Bible study. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. So if you are walking the supernatural before and it's difficult to manifest it now, you need to be honest with yourself. Do a self-evaluation. What has got my attention? I don't want to start calling different things. There's so many things I can call that is taking people's attention. But you need to refocus again. Get back to those things that 
when you were involved in them and with them, you were manifesting the supernatural on top. The problem is not with the Holy Ghost. The problem is with your focus. Back to you, Dickie Notable. Well, thank you very much, Pastor, for that. Right. Question number three. Does the supernatural does the supernatural life exempt believers from oh, challenges? challenges? Mm -hmm. No, it brings us face to face with challenges so that we can manifest the supernatural. <laughs> okay. It brings so, us face to face with challenges so that we can manifest the supernatural. Otherwise, there will not be evidence of supernatural. True. Challenges. Yeah, challenges is a way to bring out the supernatural in us. Thank you. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> so it sets us up for the manifestation of the supernatural. SFO. Yes, yeah, Sister Alremi. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, well, uh, according to what our Lord Jesus Christ said, He said, In this world there shall be tribulation, yeah. and we should cheer up, we shall overcome. Now, that phrase, it did not, there, was, there was no exemption in that phrase. It didn't say in this world there will be tribulation, but when you are in the supernatural, you live a supernatural life, you will be exempted from it. That means it's, it's clear, it's clear cut that we will definitely face challenges. There will be challenges for us as believers. As a matter of fact, challenges are, are tools, one of the tools that God uses. God uses to, to, you know, to prune us, to empower us, to, to strengthen us, to keep us going in the, in the faith. So, yes, living in the supernatural challenges must definitely come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Pastor, Pastor Austin. Austin. Yeah. yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, any gospel that tells you that when you when you become a Christian, everything will be well, everything will be good. It's not <laughs> the right gospel because the essence. Whenever the Bible have said, like just our last uh, the last speaker have said, he said in this world. So that means you will definitely meet it. He said, mm. but relax. He said you have been empowered to take over. You have been you have been empowered to you know take over the situations around you. So be of good shape. I have overcome the world for your sake. So you are going to face these challenges we come. And the, and the beautiful thing about the challenges is that it brings out the beauty of God in you. It shows, it shows what God can do. It shows the power of God being made manifest. You know, it shows the beauty of God. That's why the, when the challenges they come, you say, ah, my, what am I going to do? But you discover that in the midst of it, you will definitely see the beauty and the God and the manifestation of God being made, uh, God being made manifest. So that's the essence of these challenges. And also, like our sister have said, it helps us to be, it helps us to grow in our faith, in our belief. You know, you you, you whenever you encounter challenges, you are you, you overcome it. You discover that there's this growth in you. There's this set sense of confidence. There's mm -hmm. this sense of assurance. You know, you feel you feel yes. You know, you just for instance, you go out there, you you encounter someone who is sick, and in the midst of you know in the in the midst of uh, that, you're able to pray. God, you see God being made manifest. You see, you you feel you, you there's this confidence that we come in you, you know, inside of you. You want to get more. You want you want to encounter more people who are sick, you know, and all of all that. So that's the essence of the supernatural. It's the challenges we come, because if the challenges don't come, you definitely not see the power of God being made manifest. You know, yeah. the Bible says Jesus had to wait for four days. You know, when he heard about Lazarus, why will he have to wait? Possibly he would have said, "Oh, let me go, let me go quickly." But for the for the for, for the power of God to be made manifest, Lazarus had to die the more. So so that you not look like okay, he just died now, maybe Very dead. Dead. <laughs> so he died the more. So when he showed up, the super, supernatural was being made manifest. Amen. And the man who died for four days, he came back to life. Amen. So that's the essence of these challenges. And it helps also for those who are around you to believe that yes, God truly really exists. Hallelujah. Right. Um question. Oh, um blessing. Blessing wants to add hers. After her, I will I'll add a little bit and then we'll move to the next question. Okay. Please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, well, I'll say the challenges is um we face um helps God to show us off to the world. Mm. You know, like I would say, I, I am a kingdom builder, like I would say to my children. 
it's what you know when you finish when the carpenter finish uh, preparing the furniture he takes the furniture to the showroom you know for everybody to see how beautiful it is so the challenges we face are the things that god used to show us off in his showroom to the world mm. is what he uses to let the world know that this is my own so mm. if we don't if um if we don't face these challenges the supernatural will not be expressed mm -hmm. god cannot manifest himself through us praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord so hallelujah. hence the bible says that you will say to the mountain be thou removed and be mm. that cast into the sea mm -hmm. like my first sister said it brings us um, face to face with challenges so that God will be able to express himself through us to the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amazing. Thank you, Sir Blessing. You're welcome. Uh, Sir Blessing is new in the UK. Um, she's uh, part of the Kingdom Builders. So that means she works in the Sunday school department, all right, the children's you know, department of the church. And she's one of the, uh, the, the key guys, you know, in the ministry um, uh, from Faith Arena. So you're welcome. Good to see you. Uh, to have you here, Sir Blessing. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. God bless. Okay, just a quick one before we move to the next one. Um, so does the supernatural life exempt believers from challenges? Of course. I mean, all of you have answered beautifully. It's very true. It doesn't exempt you, okay? Um, in fact, if you have not seen the message I preached in CGMI Aberdeen, the Victory Center, last Sunday, I would advise you to look for CGMI Aberdeen Facebook and watch that, listen to that message, watch it. Because there I was talking about the fact that you are built for storms all right you are being mm, yeah. mm. and the storms the storms yeah. can stop the new creation who keeps their focus on the word okay the difference in like i said earlier is what has got your focus what has got your attention now remember when peter stepped out of the boat everything was fine jesus was standing there was waiting for him and he was walking until he took his eyes off the word took his eyes off jesus mm. and then he focused on the storm as soon as he did that he became afraid and then fear opens the door for for, for downfall as soon as he began to be as soon as he fear he began to sink and jesus had to grab him otherwise peter would have would have drowned in the presence of jesus christ yes okay now one another thing to note in that story is that as soon as um uh, jesus grabbed him and then they walk back to the boat the bible says the wind ceased why did the wind cease because the wind has succeeded in chasing peter back into his comfort zone all right every time you take a step out of the norm into the supernatural every time you take a step of faith the storm will want to show up mm. but peter's story teaches us this as long as you keep your eyes on the word the storm cannot stop you David understood that when he said in Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So the, the, the focus is not the enemies. The focus is the you who prepares a table before me. So our Archbishop always says, focus on Christ, because the focus on Christ is what gives us access to everything else. The supernatural, miracles, signs, and wonders, they all come from our focus. So don't forget, 2024 is not the year of the supernatural. It is the year to focus, focus, focus on Christ for the supernatural. So supernatural life doesn't exempt you from challenges. You will succeed challenges notwithstanding. Amen. To bomb back to you, sir. Well, thank you so much, Pastor, for that. Now, finally, the last question. How has your personal experience shaped your beliefs about the supernatural life or about the supernatural your personal experiences how has it affected the supernatural life okay blessing is back go ahead hallelujah well, well in 2020 we i had an experience my family, we had an experience where my younger brother was kidnapped. You know this thing in Nigeria. Mm, mm, mm. And it was crazy for, for a whole week. He was taken. Jesus. No phone calls, nothing. And he was he was 30, 30, 
eight. It wasn't a young, it was a small boy, but no phone calls. We couldn't reach him and all that. So when we couldn't, the police and all that, they couldn't help. We decided to go to God in prayers. You know, the whole family from the oldest to the youngest, the youngest was less than a year old. We decided that we were going to go to God in prayers. And we decreed what we wanted. Hallelujah. That by the third day, he would return. And we, we prayed as a family. You know, my mom was very fragile, her, her, her BP and all that. But we decided that this is what we are going to do. There were ideas from everywhere. You know, someone that we even knew as, um, as one of us suggested we see a seer. But we just kept on. My mom, my mom will always say, I cannot miss tap water with river water. Come on. You know. So it was a challenge for the family, but we decided that if God, my younger brother, the one after me, made a statement, say, if God cannot bring him back, then let him die where he is. Mm. It was that serious. Wow. So we prayed um, by, by the time we got to three days before he came, we decided to go to God in prayer for three days. On that third day, there was a decree that he was coming back. And by 12... 12.40 a.m., he called that he had been released. He was actually kidnapped for ritual purpose. But because we decreed that he would return, you know, he came back. Mm -hmm. That alone, since 2020, although I have always known God, but since 2020, I tell people, I am a first-hand witness of what God can do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's, that is one experience um, in the supernatural that have shaped my belief, and there is nothing I face, there's nothing I face that can really shake me to my foundations because I have seen God manifest Himself in my family. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right, Sister Rebecca. Okay. Um, I think to forget, those who contribute in now, they can just give theirs to one minute each because yes, we yes. are almost running out of time. Thank you. Okay, praise the Lord. I'm just going to join in one for my one minute. I think it's one is similar to what um sister um the sister just said because like, one of them right yeah my sister was also kidnapped. That was one I've seen where wow. my dad, who's a man of God, where he spoke the word mm. and he did not waver. She was also kidnapped for days. Mm. He saw what they did, the ritualists and all that, but God took control. That was me seeing the supernatural through someone else's eyes. Mm. But then the one that happened through my own eyes was when I told God, despite the complications when I was pregnant, that I didn't want to have a C-section. I don't have an issue with C-section, but this was just me. My pain threshold for delivering babies is, 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 is superb. But then when it comes to just a little needle to prick me, I will feel that pain. So I was like, God, I don't want this. Just because I've seen, taking care of my sister, that I had a challenge with, with C-section where she had to go through healing process. So it's a I would say it's a trauma, but it's just me. I just did not want it. And I went through so much hell that to the last minute, um, they made me sign that I was going to theater. And the minute I signed, I was still telling God that, God, me and you signed this deal. So whatever they want me to sign, they are forcing me to sign. It is not my plan. I still mm. held on. That's where um, the third question for fear. Mm. Don't let fear come in your way when you go through challenges because it's a stepping stone for mm -hmm. your faith, for your belief in God. And that was what happened to me that I had my own personal experience that till the last minute, even after I signed, thinking devil had it all, mm. in, in less than one minute, my mother-in-law is there, she can testify. And in less than one minute, as they were about to wheel me out, the doctor could not wear gloves. He cut the baby's head right there. I said, the baby's coming. And that's how God did it for me. So it's not having that fear. You can, you can, you can, you can always have your own testimony regardless of how small it is and you can do a supernatural from you or through someone your faith can be strengthened up praise the lord hallelujah right um, praise the lord. Awesome. all right mm, go ahead uh i'm just going to bring uh, a oh. dimension of the supernatural okay. uh, also, if you can keep it very brief here yeah, because we already have two other people whose hands were raised so pastor austin and um, sister Lura, me again so if you can just it's keep it brief, thank you um having um i'm talking about supernatural life 
as a Christian life, mm -hmm. righteous life, right living with God. Um, I, sometimes we we look down on the fact that we could keep to right living as a supernatural thing. Mm -hmm. being, being able to live without sin, being able to live in righteousness, being able to resist sin, being able to live every day with purity of heart, being forgivable mm -hmm. and loving people and, um, you know, purity of heart. That is a supernatural life that we I testify of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Austin. Quickly. Uh, okay. Um, I just I think we've had some good testimonies. I just want to share I, I, uh, this brief testimony. I remember then some years ago when we were to go out for evangelism. I don't have shared it. And then um, the you know where, where the spirit of God told us to go out to the market street and pray for the sick and all that and everything. So we got there. I remember we prayed and we did everything we thought we knew. Nothing was happening. And what's going to happen, you know? Because that was like a first, you know, like it was the first experience that has to do with going out there too. This was a life at the marketplace. And um, which as 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 we're doing that, somehow we just said, God, take control. You sent us here, manifest yourself. And before we knew what was happening blind eyes open lame were walking it was like in fact we were more we were so excited that i was really not i didn't believe what was happening i said this can just be god this can just this can just be god you know the super the supernatural is real it is evident it is so real mm -hmm. if you it it helps to it's there's something it does in you that you know you can't even explain there's this confidence and assurance that look you've seen it you behold it is real you know, so this thing has helped us with time to look. If someone says, ah, is this thing possible? Ah, this is very, very possible because you've, you've encountered it. It's not a thought. It's not a feeling. You encountered it. You heard it. You saw it happen. You know, yeah. so I think that's that's the core, core, core. Christianity, like I tell people, don't take it as, it's not a religion, like I, I always say. Until you have encounters, until you have, a, you know, you've encountered, you've experienced these things, you will not know the reality of this thing. You may not be able to, you know, as, you know, have an understanding. When people talk about the supernatural, it may sound somehow, but when you've encountered it, you've seen God be made, then your trust believe, your system, your belief changes. It yeah. goes from one level yeah. higher to, you know, yeah. to the next level. So that's yeah. what it does. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Right. SFO quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How well, quickly, um, I basically, I will say that yeah, 2022 and 2023 were the years that I, I truly, as a believer, lived a life of supernatural. While, while I was in Nigeria, so many things happened to me. Financially, my business was down. Marriage was down. Everything was upside down. Mm -hmm. And basically, that period, my husband was just something else. You know, finance to take care of the children. He wouldn't give me money. But this particular day, I went to God. I told God, I said, God, you brought me into this marriage. I didn't ask for this man. From today, I'm not going to ask him for anything for these children again. You know, and I stopped going to meet my husband for whatever the children need. But how people do know my need, I cannot say it. The exact amount, the exact thing that I need the money for, there's provision for it. The other thing is, 2022, I was supposed to come to UK. Something happened. The whole thing went down the line, the, the, the down the lane. But 2023, my brother-in-law, who happens to be someone having issue with my my sister, was the one that took it upon himself, brought out COS without my contribution, got me the COS without my contribution, got me the visa fee without my contribution, bought me the ticket, did everything. You know, it just like, ah, God. I experienced God as in a, a, a miracle, a first-hand first -hand miracle. God's power in my life within that, uh, those two years, 2022, 20, 20, 20, It made me to understand that truly God exists, that if we have faith in him, as believer, if you can work with him, you don't even need to go and get money somewhere to fix something. That is the way you always do things for us. Amen. That's my own experience. Thank you. Thank you. A big girl. One minute. 
Okay, one... praise praise God. Um, I just want to thank God for this um opportunity that um I'm here with my fellow brethren, CJMI. Um, something uh -huh. happened this January. Um, we are new to the UK and um we'll be having some challenges, but the most striking one was uh February February rains. Mm. Like it was like three or four days to deadline. Mm. And it got to a point one of the nights, I and my husband we woke up because at that point we didn't know what to do. And we started crying, like as in that cry that the Bible said. Um, a broken and a contrast spirit, the Lord will not despise. At that point, I didn't even know. It was just tears that was coming out from my eyes and I was just looking to the heavens. And in the spirit, I just saw myself. Um, I closed my eyes in the spirit and I was just telling God, God, hear my cry from heaven. I need a speedy answer because this rent has to be paid or else we'll be pushed out. This rent, I don't know how, I, I, I wasn't talking, but... I closed my eyes. My husband was just down in tears, saying um, he regrets everything and all of that. And myself, I was like, God, if you don't do something within these three days, that means I have to go to UKVI and tell them I want to go back. That I, we can't continue again. Even my studies that I came for, I can't continue. But just 48 hours to when the expiration of the rent was um, to be made, my friend in London, She's a pastor too in London branch, called me and said she has spoken with one of the pastors in CGMI. And some as in like instantly, that's it was. I I I just said that God, this can only be like before the 48 hours, the money was ready. And it it's it, I'm as in a now my prayer point, I'm so relaxed praying because I just say, God, if you can take this emergency. Like, if you could answer me this emergency, that means everything I pray, you will always answer. So the supernatural life, it gives you the confidence that with faith, everything will be sorted out. It may not look like it. And I, sometimes I would like, God, why did you even allow me to get so tense before showing up? You would have just showed up from the beginning. But at the end of the day, God showed up miraculously. God showed up. And not just showing up, he now brought me into the family. And before I knew it, um, a pastor from another zone, we um, got talked and I was like, okay, I need to join. And I was so happy that I, when my husband came the other day, and I told him that how we start our CJ, my family here. He was like, are you serious? Have you seen a branch? I said, yes. So I, indeed, the uh, God works, the supernatural works. And it has calmed me that I just pray and I leave it at his feet, knowing that if he could bring help in 48 hours, that I didn't know where it would come from. I just had that confidence now that my faith has risen to the fact that I know that God is going to sort out any other thing that I need. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Thank testimony. you so much. You are not Thank going you. back. You are not going back. Huh? You, you, will, you, will, you will complete your mission in this country. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, I mean, I'm so blessed. I, well, you know, wow. Now, in conclusion, the original plan of God for his children was living supernaturally, naturally. This life is available when we acknowledge our insufficiency and accept Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We will be in command over situations and circumstances. Our lives will become a sign and a wonder. That is where we are going to. Right, we'll unmute ourselves and go to the memory verse. Um, this, everybody should unmute now. After the count of three, we are going to start from memory verse. And then we say Galatians 5, 25, and then we go through it. We know the way we do it. So I'm going to count down after the count of three. One, two, three. Go. Memory. We live in the spirit. Let us also walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Thank you very much. Right, the class has been very, very dynamic. I'm so blessed by the testimonies.
and every contribution, every reader. So, Pastor, I'm going to hand back to you. Wow, wow. wow. Please, a round of applause for uh, Dickie Otobon for taking us through that Bible study. Amen, 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 amen. And a round of applause for yourself also for your participation tonight. Amen. Honestly, I would say this is, you know, starting off the Bible study with a real bang. And we bless God for the participation. You guys did really great. Those that read Bible references, those that asked questions, those that answered questions, those that even shared their testimonies. Look, today was just, you know, um, exceptional. You know, and when we were starting the Bibles, I was thinking, oh God, I mean, I know that Nigeria was playing against South Africa and at the AFCON semifinals. And I was like, oh, well, we have a lot of Nigerians in CGMI in the UK. Uh, okay, are they going to turn up a Bible study? But you guys did so fantastically um, well. Yes, Nigeria won the match eventually. So congratulations to Nigeria for that. But before we go, before we go, I want us to, um, mm -hmm. was it, is it um, Chi that said she's tapping into the testimonies of people tonight because she's waiting for a, for her younger brother's call and is getting to three weeks. So, um, Sister Chi, we don't know uh, the background to that, um, but we just want to mm -hmm. agree. My younger brother is in Oman. The last, the last day he spoke to me, he actually okay. sent me a text and said, wow. evening, please. Please pray for your brother. And we were, it was exactly the day we were praying for men on mm -hmm. this prayer prayer platform. Mm -hmm. I was praying when the message came in, so I didn't go to it. So when we finished praying, I went to it, like that would be like uh, 25 minutes later, mm -hmm. went back, read the message, and then I did a voice note. I said, I just finished praying for you as part of the men in my family. Mm -hmm. On a second thought, I said, let me call him. I start calling him. His phone is ringing till today, but he has not spoken to any of us. And he's, it has gotten me here. Like I'm praying like every second of the day right now. <laughs> Anytime I think of it, I'll just start praying. Today, I did a lot of praises telling my soul, hope thou in the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, brothers and sisters, I just want us to, you know, let's let's do this as a family, okay? And um, before we end the Bible study, please don't dial out. I want us to join our faith together to pray uh, for sis, uh, for Pastor Chi's brother, who she has not heard from for the past three weeks, who is in Oman, in a, in a, you know, in, a, in, a, in, in in that is not his own country. All right. So I mean, if it was your brother or your sister, I'm sure you would want us to do this for you. All right. So can we as a family, wherever you are right now, and just begin to pray uh, for Pastor Pastor Chi, what's it? What is his name? Well, his name is like Wisdom Onyeka Chiku. Okay. All, right. All right. So let's okay, let's pray for wisdom Onyeka Chiku right now. Everybody open your mouth and begin to pray that in the name of Jesus, wherever he is, we declare his safety. We declare in the name of Jesus that he will make contact with his family. He will make contact with his family. Open your mouth and pray. We have taught about the supernatural. Let's put the supernatural to work right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for wisdom. Lord, we thank you. We declare that our prayers locate him wherever he is in the world right now. Amen. Lord, the sister knows that the last time she spoke to him, he was an old man. And so, Lord, we locate him by the spirit. 
in the name of Jesus. We locate him by the word, by the spoken word. And we say, oh God, he is safe in Jesus' name. Lord, we call forth wisdom. And we say in the name of Jesus, he makes contact with his family in the mm -hmm. mighty name of Jesus. Lord, all is well with him. We mm -hmm. declare that every fear, every anxiety, mm -hmm. oh God, that might be gripping the family right now, because they've not heard from their loved one in three weeks. Lord, we declare that Lord, those fears and anxieties, Lord, they are taken out of the way because mm -hmm. Lord, he will make contact. We declare in Jesus' name that Lord, Amen. in this week, after this Bible yes. study, oh, we declare Amen. contact. We declare Amen. contact is established. Amen. Contact is established. Amen. Contact is established in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Answering our prayers, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. I'm grateful. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Amen. I mean, you, you guys know that we oh. are one family. CGMI, we are one family. All right? We stand for ourselves. We believe in God and we stand for each other. All right? I mean, today's Bible study has been amazing. Apologies, it's, 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 it's overrun, but we just need to do these things. And it's the first Bible study. So I'm sure you can excuse us for that. Well, Next week, Wednesday, we'll be back again um, to continue yeah. in this new series, all right, in this new series um, of understanding the supernatural life. And I'm so glad tonight for everybody that joined. I could see people um, from, uh, from our, our church in Sheffield. Um, I could see people from different places, from she Sheffield is here. I can see Manchester. I can see um, Hall. I can see Wolverhampton. All right. Wherever you have joined from, we we Church of God missions across different locations. Let me just call out the locations again for you where we have Thanks, so All right. Oh, from Stoke on Trent. Yeah, Pastor Chase from Stoke on Trent. Amazing. Thanks for joining. Okay. So we are in Aberdeen, Scotland. We are in Hall. We are in Manchester. We are in Wolverhampton. We are in Sheffield. We are starting our Sunderland branch next month in March. In London, we have three locations and we are still expanding by the power of the holy ghost all right the target is to plant 25 branches and so we are working really really hard to make this happen so that everyone will have a church of god mission in the united kingdom that is close to where they live okay god bless you god bless you god bless you all right i'll just pray and we close father thank you tonight for blessing us um with your word we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, Lord, for what a wonderful Bible study we've had today. Father, what a way to begin the year, to begin the year. This is the very first Bible study session of the year. Lord, we thank you for all the testimonies. My goodness, Lord, we return all the glory to you, O oh God, because, Lord, no man will take your glory. Take the glory, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives, and we know that there will be more testimonies. We, Lord, we commend your people to the, to the Spirit and to the Word, and we know you will bring us back oh lord again as a family next wednesday on this same zoom platform to receive your word to be blessed and to be enhanced take all the glory father in jesus name amen, amen. god bless you all love you love you love you have a wonderful amen. night i'll see you next wednesday shalom, shalom, shalom. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Shalom. Bye -bye.